Okay, exam two, study guide. So a couple things we need to talk about with this study guide. I'm not gonna go over the whole study guide, but I wanna hit on a couple major points that might be a little confusing when you're going through the study guide. So number five, what is altered mental status? What things can cause altered mental status? So when we're thinking about altered mental status, a great acronym you can use, uh, you can look it up online, it's called AEIOU-TIPS. And so A stands for alcohol abuse and substance abuse, or and substances, and then acidosis. E stands for ecstasy, environmental, epilepsy, electrolytes, encephalopathy, endocrine disease. I'm not requiring that you remember all of these, and this is not required for the test. This is just something helpful to remember. Maybe you only remember one, but it, it's helpful to understand some things that cause altered mental status. I stands for infection. O stands for overdose, oxygen deficiency. U, underdose, uremia, uh, so kidney failure, trauma, tumor for T, I, insulin and intestinal, P, psychogenic or poisons, and S, stroke or shock. So that's a way to remember the different altered mental status that someone can have. Uh, you can look it up online. There's millions of places that have AEIO tips, and they have them listed out and examples of each. So that's something to look into. Okay, uh, moving on down the list. Signs of respiratory failure. This is going to be number nine. Uh, when we're talking about respiratory failure, they have gone from the fact that they are having a respiratory problem, they've gone into respiratory distress, and now they are getting tired. And we are in respiratory failure. So if they're getting tired, we can think about sleepy, we can think about unconscious, we can think about that they are having bluish skin, um, they're, they're blue because they're not getting that peripheral vascular network being fulfilled with more oxygen it's decreasing uh, some other things uh, that you can look at when we're talking about that with respiratory failure confusion uh, fatigue they might be a little bit restless uh, they might have rapid shallow breathing and anytime we have shallow breathing if you see shallow breathing on any any type of exam think we need to ventilate this patient shallow is not adequate and gasping is not adequate breathing we've got to ventilate a racing heart so what do we call racing heart we call that tachycardia that might be on the exam tachycardia a regular heartbeats and profuse sweating what do we call profuse sweating diaphoretic so if you're seeing those kinds of things they're going into shock their their body is shutting down we need to keep them warm, we need to get them to the hospital rapidly, and we've got to manage that airway breathing circulation. We've got to ventilate them, we've got to keep that airway open and patent. Maybe use an OPA, maybe use an MPA, depending on if they have a gag reflex, we can't use that OPA, and we can drop in an MPA. You know, if we're going to have to do a lot of suctioning, we'll put in an MPA in so that we can continue to suction, but still try to keep a maintained airway. All right, moving on down the line. Uh, what are some different types of respirations? Well, what are some different types of respirations? You have Kuzma's rep respirations and Shane Stokes. You have normal respirations. You have Brady. You have Tacky. Uh, so those are some that you might want to look up and uh, understand uh, what's going on. And then also irregular respirations. And then what is the treatment for shallow breathing, well, we know the treatment for shallow breathing is we're going to have to bag with a BVM. All right, so end tidal CO2, you guys remember the numbers? 35 to 45. Remember the blood's pH is 7.35 to 7.45. You remember the last two numbers, 35 to 45. That's the numbers we want to keep somebody in with their end tidal carbon dioxide. Signs of respiratory distress. So you see someone and you know that they're not breathing well and we're having respiratory distress. We see an increased pulse rate or a decreased pulse rate. That's not an adequate sign to know that something's going on, but it's, it's a high indicator. 
Uh, pale cyanotic flush skin, noisy breathing, use of accessory muscles to breathe, retractions, altered mental status, grunting, noise flare, nose flaring, retractions, sweating, wheezing, their body position, they're in that tripod position. Uh, so think about a couple of those things. Okay, uh, what happens when someone hyperventilates? When someone hyperventilates, their end tidal CO2 is going to decrease because they're breathing too much oxygen. They're breathing too fast. After giving any medication, remember that you need to check allergies and get a full set of vitals before you give a medication. But after you give any medication, you need to document the time that you gave it and the dose so that you know what you did. And adsorption. Adsorption is adding to the molecules. We use activated charcoal when someone ingests a poison and we're going to add to uh, the molecules in there so that the activated charcoal grabs on and then changes the chemical structure a little bit. So it adsorbing. It's not absorbing like a sponge. So that's part one of the uh, exam number two.